<laughs> state of you. Well, it's a big job, Steph. You know, you know when you're this passionate about sport, I love the fellas. You know, I love Pistol Pete. The boys are doing, they, they're making waves around the ocean. We're, we're the greatest nation on earth. But last time I saw you, you were fizzed about the Lions test. And someone's told me that you've been to the test and you haven't seen your bed since that test. Oh, I haven't. Uh, those British fans know how to party. You know, I was out, I was out for a two-day bender with got, um, some guy called uh, uh, Patio Furniture from Ireland. <laughs> We had a bloody good old time, and um, I, it was actually quite funny. I was chanting, Brian, 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 and I um, only realised yesterday that they were actually chanting lines because I was actually asking who was Brian for the last 96. So, yeah, it's a hell of a, hell of a week, and uh, nothing's, you know, it's not going to stop. Yeah, apology, Grant. Grant, great game on Saturday, mate. Uh, I'm going to give you three words. Relentless, uncompromising and ruthless. How good were the ABs? Yeah, they were, all of the above. And I think probably clinical as well, because remember the Lions created probably more opportunities to score tries and only nailed two. I think we've created three and scored three, so I think that probably sums it all up. Try the game, though. Nisbo did belong to the, the DHL, British and Irish Lions. Um, they, I think, the whole team were in shock that they could score a try like that. Well, absolutely, and, um, and, and hopefully it's a pointer for things to come because um, uh, my belief about uh, players in the Northern Hemisphere is that they play with fear, fear of making mistakes. And thank heavens for Liam Williams that he didn't fear. He actually took it on. I mean, it could have turned to absolute custard and uh, they could have been nailed inside their 22, but he took a little bit of a risk and off he went. And I'd like to see more of it because they do have the quality when they put their mind to it. You know what stood out for me? And it, it put, bloody puts a smile on my face. You know, it really gets me going. How good was that streaker? You know, a bit of frivolity. Guy, he's absolutely blind as a bat. He runs onto the field willy-nilly. The guy's having a good time. This is what I'm talking about. This is sport. You know, we're bringing it back. Bit of fizz in the crowd. Grant? What an absolute door. <laughs> There, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, we call the Generation Gap, a man that appreciates rugby for rugby, and um, Ant. Yeah, and another guy who's had who had absolute, he had massive stones. A young punter, 23 oh, years old. He put great. four and a half grand on Cody Taylor to score the first try. One hundred and seventeen thousand profit off that bet. So he's he's put down four and a half. He's put seven into his kick, and he's put one hundred and ten thousand on the All Blacks to win by thirteen and over. Gutsy, gutsy stuff. So with a four and a half thousand dollar start and a two hundred thousand dollar finish, just celebrate that man. Hundred percent. I just don't know who's even got four and a half grand line around these days. Obviously a trust fund kid, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Nisbo, the silverback nitpicking gorilla Warren Gatlin. It is absolutely barbaric that he's trying to pick holes in our tactics. Is it nitpicking? Yeah, I think the word Nick picking certainly comes to mind. Uh, I mean, it was a very small part of the game, wasn't it? I think what had happened once. And do remember, halfbacks like it rough. So I, I reckon Conor Murray probably enjoyed it. What are you up to there, Ant Man? What have you got up there? What are you looking at? What are you pooping at? You just got your no. You look at your own screen, there, Steph. The Sonny Bill Williams. There's photos just popped up on my, uh, on my desktop. Oh, you didn't search it or anything. No, no, I haven't looked it up at all. But. Uh, Beautiful specimen. Uh, let's talk about stereotypical uh, rugby play. The Northern Hemisphere forwards are normally known as the most dominant in the world. Uh, the ABs did a fantastic job to keep them under control, didn't they, Grant? Yeah, they're, they're only the most dominant because they think they are, but they simply <laughs> aren't. And as Steve, Hans, as Steve Hansen rightly pointed out, you don't win two World Cups in a row without having world-class type forwards. So, I mean, they should really take a deep breath. I know their game is based around tight forwards and dominance and all the rest of it. But there are other ways to play the game of rugby. And I think Hanson showed that on Saturday. What are you going to do this week, Nisbo? Let's hear it from the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside the square here and I'm going to say Bowden Barrett scores a try in the Test match. Oh, oh wow. That's more ballsy than anything else. but That's good, though. Yeah, it was. He He's was running good... some good crash ball as well in the weekend. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna stick in the same option, but I'm changing my selection. So last week, incredibly successful, uh, 11, to, 11 to 20. Um, gosh, your humbleness is rubbing off on me. I'm going up one. I'm going 21 to 30. Oh, I think we'll see a little bit more expression at Westpac Stadium. So I'm going 
New Zealand by 21 to 30 this week, and that's it. Uh, it's at very good money, over four bucks. Yeah, nice staff. Kudos to you, mate. You are betting very well. You're a passionate man, and uh, I guess that's 25 years in the game. That's experience. <laughs> 25 you know, years. Uh, oh, have I jumped the gun there? Or is that... <laughs> oh, by the end of my career, I would have done 25 years. Yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. And I've been struggling. I know, lads, I've really sort of pushed the proverbial boat out literally this last week, but also with my betting. And um, so I've got to rate Lift it in. I've only, I've only, yeah, thanks, Nisbo. Uh, just <laughs> let me spit this out, please, mate. I've... Um, <laughs> I've, I'm going to be a bit more conservative this week. Uh, you know, I've got my lucky red uh, sock on, and uh, uh, cheers to Wyatt Crockett, size 15 feet. And you know what they say about big socks? Big shoes. Yeah, big shoes. That's correct, Staff. And um, I'm going New Zealand by 29 to 35 points. So that's pain seven. That's not bad. Well, as long as Bowden <laughs> Barrett contributes to your winning margin, I'm happy. Ah, oh, what a week it's been, fellas. It's been to continue as well into the AEB's Pistol Pete and your salty seaman team in New Zealand. How good. The Wowos. Yeah, the women's, uh, women's sevens as well won the World Series, only lost one game all year. That's magnificent. Susie Bates with your century. Hey, boys. Hey, what about the motor racing? What about Le Mans? What about Scotty Dixon? What about uh, Levi Sherwin? Oh, We've had a hell of a time. <laughs> the federal heads oh, fired up. Jeez. Oh, the edge of his seat. Look at him go. <laughs> Bloody hell. And also just RIP to uh, uh, Bernice, my neighbour, who passed away this week. Hell of a human being. And uh, thank you very much for letting me pick up these iPads uh, from your garage sale for free. So that's always, it's always good stuff. But uh, anyway, lads, we'll see you next week on Head, Heart and Balls. Thanks for your company.